Hi guys, welcome to Master Marketing. Today we're going to talk about 12 different ways you can market yourself, your services, your product, the houses you have listed, okay? So, uh, not a lot of things have changed over the past 200 years, but a lot has changed over the past 15 years. So we're going to talk about different ways to market yourself, properties, services. First, we're going to cover six tried and true methods that have actually stood the test of time. And I bet you can think of several of them, right? Let's talk about old-fashioned networking. Talking to people who you don't know yet. Creating relationships and making connections. Building rapport with your friends, your family, who you already know. And meeting people outside of your industry who may have the need to buy or sell something. Maybe a, a lawyer, maybe a doctor, maybe a car salesman, accountants, CPAs, you know, any type of other industry professional probably needs housing, right? Yeah, so go mix and mingle, network with those folks. One of the things I like to say to my agents is, everybody in your office, the, all the other agents who you hang out with, guess what? They're not going to buy or sell a house from you. Okay, so go spend your time with other people in other industries, building your network of professionals. One great way for you to network with other real estate professionals is to go to National Sales Convention. This year we had our National Sales Convention Ready, Set, Go 2017 in the beautiful city of Phoenix. That was just about a week ago and I probably made up close to 30 referral connections from across the country. And hello guys, if you've never heard of mailbox money, you call, you set the agent and the client up in a different state or a different town, they close the deal, they send you a check. Shows up in your mailbox. That's mailbox money. That's a great way to network with people. Something else you can do to help market yourself and your properties and services, phone calls. But who are you going to call? Ghostbusters, I always have to do that, so, you know, you're laughing, I know you're laughing. <laughs> Alright, so, who are you going to call? You're going to call your sphere of influence. You're going to call your past clients. Maybe you're going to call the geographic farm or that neighborhood you're targeting as your home base for getting business. Maybe you can call around the just listed properties that other agents in your office have put on the board, or maybe you can call on the listings that have just sold that other agents that you know have closed recently. Either way, get on the phone. It's the next best thing to talking to somebody face to face. Okay. Here's a real estate hack for you. If you're looking for the needle in the haystack, which we all are, expired listings and for sale by owners, they are the needle in the haystack. Expired listings already tried to sell their property, and guess what? They failed. The only reason why, in my opinion, a property would expire in today's hot market is because the agent who they hired didn't do any marketing, they didn't do any type of uh, correct pricing strategy, maybe it's worth 500 but they decided to list it for 675 Or the property wasn't easily accessible to other agents. I'm sure you've seen this on the MLS before. Only show property Tuesdays between 11.30 and 11.45. Thursdays from 8.30 in the morning to 9.30 in the morning. And on Saturdays, only from 1.30 a.m. to 1.35 a.m. Now, I'm being extreme there, but you're going to see some things on the MLS where it's like, geez, how do you expect us to show the property? Now, that's my personal opinion. No necessarily truth to that. Now, for sale by owners... Guess what? They already have their property for sale. 96% of them didn't know that they need us to close the deal. So why not stop by that for sale by owner, knock on the door, maybe get a phone number from your title company and try to call them to see if you can tour the property, see if you have any buyers that if they had a buyer, you'd be able to get some type of broker co-op for. Okay, so expired listings and for sale by owners those are the needles in the haystack and if you don't have anybody else on your list to call call those guys okay let's keep going here oh 
before you get on the phone and call people, you probably want to know your scripts and dialogues. Here's a sample script. Talk to your office manager or your coach about getting some updated scripts and dialogues. Something else that you can do to market yourself, your properties, and your services, well, open houses. That is your retail store, guys. That's your retail store. Have you ever worked in retail before? Maybe, maybe not. But if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Let's just say you work at the Gap, okay, in the mall. When somebody walks into the Gap, what do they want to buy? Computers? Sporting goods? Probably not. They're in the Gap to probably get some clothes, right? So imagine when somebody drives their car around town, they stop, park their car, get off, see an open house sign, knowing that you're inside waiting to talk with them, and they walk in anyways, isn't that a great opportunity to start a conversation? They're voluntarily walking into your open house, aka your retail store, that allows you to create conversation. They expect it, they anticipate it, and they know they're going to talk to a real estate agent just like you when they walk into that open house. So, if you can, please invest in 10, 20, maybe even 30 open house signs. And if you take good care of them, they'll last you years. If you have nothing going on during the weekends or during the weekdays, I suggest you do an open house. It's my number one thing that I suggest new agents do. If you've got nothing going on for yourself right now, invest in open house signs and open a retail store in a neighborhood that you choose. Here's a little tip. Don't do open houses on ugly properties, okay? Do properties that are nice, that are rehab, that look great, that show great in good neighborhoods. That way, you get good clients who are looking to purchase in neighborhoods just like that. Now, you may not always get the client to sign in on your login sheet or things like that, but you're practicing your skill, you're getting better at it every time you do an open house, and sooner or later, Somebody's going to like you enough to hire you and help you. You help them get their house. Let's talk about something else here. Okay? This is tried and true. It's been going on for decades now. Direct mail. Direct mail isn't cheap. Okay? It does cost. You know, Stamps are, what, 49 cents, almost 50 cents now, something like that. And they're only going to go up. Okay? So, it's not cheap. But... They are effective. They're a great way of getting your name out there to your preferred neighborhood that you want to target. They're a great way of staying top of mind for your past clients. They're a great way for you to meet new people and for them to get acclimated with you in that neighborhood. So, direct mail is great. Little real estate hack for you. I'm going to help you save a lot of money. USPS.com. Every door direct mail. Or... EDDM. EDDM. You start a business account on USPS.com. You go to EDDM and then you'll notice that in every zip code there's mail carrier routes. Now with EDDM marketing you have to buy the entire mail route but when you buy an entire mail route it's not 49 to 50 cents a stamp. It's just 18 cents per mailing and those can be jumbo size, they can be small size, whatever you do Try to take advantage of this awesome program that the United States Postal Service has for you because we all like saving money, right? Keep our overheads low, keep our profits high. I implore you to check out USPS.com every door direct mailing. It'll save you a lot of money when it comes to your mailers. Here's a sample of what it looks like. You're going to log on here. This is the Greater Los Angeles. I know it's tough to see in the video, but you're going to see the little zip codes and once you click on the zip code, it will open up all the mail routes and it will tell you how many houses are there. It will tell you exactly how much money you're going to need to spend to mail those out. Be sure to look at the EDDM guidelines before you jump in because you want to make sure your postcards are up to the EDDM standards and you also have to have a little EDDM label on the top corner for bulk mailing. So it's a great tool. I love it for geographic farming. Let's talk about this one, yeah? National Association of Realtors Buyer and Seller Survey of 2016 says that 9% of 
of all buyers who found the property they closed on found it because they drive around neighborhoods they like. They call a yard sign, speak directly to the listing agent, and make a deal. So if you have a listing and you have a company yard sign up, good for you. You have a listing and you have a company yard sign up that's up to brand standards. However, if you can afford to do so, and I hope you can, make time for it, make the money, make the effort to do this, get your own custom yard sign with your name, your cell phone, and your website so when those 9% of buyers in the country who are driving around the neighborhoods they like, when they find your house and they call you on it, you have an opportunity to not only represent the seller, but also represent the buyer and double your income to make the transaction happen. Always, always, always be careful when you're dual representing a buyer and a seller. If you don't do it the right way, you don't honor your fiduciary responsibilities, you can find yourself in hot water. So be the honest agent that I know you are and do right by all of your clients when double ending a transaction. But yard signs, custom yard signs, your name, your phone number, your website is gonna help you reach those 9% of clients throughout the country who called and closed on a transaction directly from a yard sign. Let's keep going. Print media. Is print media dead? National Association of Realtors says that less than 1% of all buyers who close on a property in 2016 actually found the house they purchased via a real estate magazine or real estate newspaper section. Is it dead? Well, not necessarily, but you can do this if you choose. It's a great way to stay top of mind. It's a great way to put your name out there. But in my opinion, it's not the best way for you to close transactions. In my opinion, if you have an option to either do print media or to go out there and buy more open house signs, go buy the open house signs. We still cover print media. You obviously see our ads in the LA Times and the Press Telegram and other newspapers. And you see a lot of our agents promoting their listings and themselves and services in those real estate magazines. So they're not bad, but imagine if you have a print media piece going out there, like a magazine, the magazine deadline is on the 15th of the month and the magazine won't actually get printed and distributed until the first of the month. Now, if you're doing exactly what all of our boot camp classes are telling you, you're going to list the property at the right price. You're going to have a full marketing blitz in place for the property, and you're going to be doing lots of other activities to bring attention to it. If you do all that stuff, by the time your print magazine hits the local Albertsons or Ralph's grocery store, the property is probably going to be sold. And when people call you on it, they're not going to be interested in what you're trying to sell because the house they're calling on is already gone. So take that with a grain of salt. If you haven't tried it out yet, go for it. But here's ways you can do it newspaper advertisements, real estate magazines, bus benches are still super cool in your neighborhood. Okay? Neighborhood billboards, uh, shout out to the mother and son team over there in uh, Downey. They have their boards all over the place. Great way to stay top of mind. How about community newsletters? If you go to church a lot, you know, they have the Sunday paper that goes out at the end of every program, so maybe you want to advertise there. How about property flyers? Property flyers are print magazines, or, or sorry, print media, aren't they? You can print out property flyers and you can go door to door knocking, giving somebody information about a listing for sale, a listing coming up for sale, or how about just a neighborhood market analysis on a monthly or quarterly basis to make sure people know that you're bringing them something of value. Your business cards, you don't think those are print media? I take a lot of time and pride in the way my business card looks because when I hand it to somebody, that's my calling card. It should say, you know, everything about you on the card, professional, classy, hopefully your print media and your business cards state that you can handle a million dollar listing. I always like to tell my agents when it comes to print media, here's some samples, but think about it this way, Nordstrom's versus Walmart. Who do you want to shop with? 
But if you're a budget, of course, you're going to go to Walmart. But if you're looking for high quality service and the best products, you're going to choose Nordstrom over that Walmart, right? So when you think about your print materials or anything you hand out to clients, think, are you handing out a Walmart piece or are you handing out a Nordstrom piece? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's keep going. We're going to talk about a couple of cutting edge strategies here that hopefully you have the time or wherewithal to go to YouTube or Google and research it a little bit more to figure out how these programs might be able to help you increase your business. Let's keep going. Obviously, multiple listing service is a great way to market your listings. But if you didn't know, if you have a listing, you can go to the MLS and use the reverse prospecting tool. You can actually go on there to find other agents who have a listing or a buyer set up for a listing like this. So this is one of my old listings. And when I use the reverse prospecting tool, I see a laundry list of people who have clients set up on the auto email system specifically for a property like mine. Now, our company has re uh, recently introduced the buy side technology and that's a great way for you as, a, as an agent to find out which properties we have within our company and they're gonna match your buyer's needs and vice versa. If you have a listing, it's a great way for you to find out which buyer's agents within our company have clients looking for a listing just like yours. So I invite you to please come check out BuySide. It's a wonderful platform. It'll help you connect more buyers and sellers together with real-time information, smart hot maps of where the buyers are looking, and three instant valuations of what a property may be selling for on today's market. So check out BuySide and on the MLS, use the reverse prospecting tool. Let's talk about some other things that might be able to help you increase your business. I know you've heard of it before. Zillow, right? Trulia, Homes.com, Realtor.com, even Yelp. These are avenues for you to market yourself, your services, and your listings for free. All of these websites here allow you to create free profiles. They allow you to advertise yourself for free. What it also does is, when you have all these profiles set up, and let's say you're doing an open house, somebody meets you and they really like you. Did you know that 88% of millennials are going to research their agent before actually contacting them again? So, if you have all these profiles set up, when they type in your name, as they would type in my name, Vic Kiros, you'd be able to find me very easily. You'd be able to see several reviews from happy customers who I've serviced in the past. And hopefully, somebody doing research on me will be impressed enough to reach out, give me a call, and let's try to make a connection. So this is all free for you. One of the great things about Zillow is it actually allows you for free to put up custom videos. It allows you to show all of the uh, listings that you've sold in the past. It also has your bio. This is my Realtor.com profile, and the bio is exactly the same across the board. This is my Yelp profile. Everything is the same. It's a great way to get clients. Real estate hack. All these portals allow you to input, or your clients, they allow your clients to input reviews about you and your services. And it's a huge thing, right? We, we use Yelp and Google for everything from finding laundromats to restaurants to uh, night spots, bars, um, you know, fun things to do, hiking trails, and all this good stuff. Why wouldn't you put yourself on these review platforms so somebody can do the research and find you and find out how great of a realtor you are and how you can service them. So it's a great thing to do. Again, 88% of millennials will research you before hiring you. And if you're not on these platforms and you have zero reviews, they're not going to hire you. That's gonna change. Here are some sample reviews here. And uh, one review in particular, let me see if I can find him, mm -mm -mm, right here. Evan Robledo, he's never going to watch this, but shout out to Evan for this awesome review. He says, Victor was a true professional and a pleasure to work with. 
I came into contact with Victor when I saw his profile on Realtor.com which had great reviews. That's what it says. He found me because of Realtor.com and my testimonials. So, if it can work for me, it will definitely work for you. Let's switch gears a little bit, guys. Email marketing. Back in the early 90s, da -da -da, you got mail. That was cool, right? Nowadays, you're like, dude, I got so much mail, so much email, I don't even want to go through all of it. However, to be an email ninja, you're going to need to have roughly 17% open rate. Okay, 17.5% open rate means you're an email ninja and lots of people are opening your emails. That's a good thing. Now, on our BHHS Resource Center, there are uh, newsletter templates. There's four every month. That means you can copy and paste a story that is real estate related, fun and light, that you don't have to come up with yourself. Copy and paste it from the Resource Center slap it into your resource email marketing plan and send it off. The biggest thing you want to do when it comes to email marketing is you want to make sure that they see your name and in the email subject line it has something to do with real estate, something to do with homes, property, investment properties, something like that. Because think about this, if you're an email ninja and 17.5% of people are opening your emails, What's going on with the other 82.5%? They're not opening your emails, right? So, imagine this. You're on the 5 freeway, and you see that big red truck pass you. Okay, it's got the polar bears on it. Red and white truck, polar bears. What are you thinking? Coca-Cola, right? You're sitting in your car, you see the Coca-Cola truck pass you by on the 5 freeway, and yet you can't buy a Coca-Cola right then and there, can you? No, you can't. You might be drinking one, you might be drinking something else, but the idea is they are staying top of mind. So when you have the need or the want to drink a soda pop, you're going to think, hopefully in their eyes, Coca-Cola. That's how you should approach your marketing. They don't always have to respond. But if you're staying top of mind, consistently in their face, when they need to buy or sell a piece of real estate, when they want to buy or sell a piece of real estate, they know you're an option. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to use you, but it means that they know you're an option and at least you have a shot. Okay? So never stop marketing. Even if they don't open it, them seeing your name and having something to do with real estate in the email subject line is huge for your business. Here's a sample of what we got going on here. I sent an email out to 17, almost, almost 1,750 people. I had a 20% open rate, which isn't bad. I had a 2% click rate. Now, the other 80% of people didn't open my email, and that's okay. Why? Because they saw my name, and they saw real estate in the email subject line, keeping me top of mind. Let's keep going here. I know you know about social media. You know about Facebook, you know about Instagram, you know about Twitter. I think that LinkedIn is maybe more for professional networking when you're looking for a new job. Um, but also, we didn't include Snapchat here. That's another way for you to stay top of mind and market yourself for free to people you're already connected with. Okay, so try to get on these platforms. There's tons of videos about how to do it. We do classes on these regularly, so hopefully I see you in one of my classes and I show you the details and the ins and outs of how to use social media to your advantage. Video marketing. This is huge. This is big. Did you know that 91% of all sellers, they now expect, not prefer, 91% of all sellers expect a listing agent to do a high quality video of their property when marketing it for sale. So, it's no longer an option. It's mandatory. It's 2017. Get with it. Now, you can do videos lots of different ways. You can do videos to showcase a piece of property. You could do videos to educate your clients on the buying and selling process and all the little nuances that come along with it. Or you can do a, a flat-out promotional commercial for yourself 
showing what you do to service your clients. So there's different ways you can do video. And using our Videolicious tool through BHHS Resource, it's free, it's fast, and it's easy. Okay? If you don't like how the video comes out because you don't like the way you sound or you don't like the way you look, guess what? You're the only person who feels that way. All your friends and family already like you. They're okay with the way you look. They're okay with the way you sound. Get over it. Just do a video, maybe just a little introduction video about who you are, what you do, and where you're service at. Because I'll tell you what, once you throw that video from Videolicious on YouTube and all your social media profiles, when somebody you meet in an open house or a networking event searches your name and you pop up, that video is going to pop up first and they're going to see you and interact a little bit. It's been weird. I do lots of videos on my YouTube channel and sometimes I run into people at the grocery store and they're like, dude, you're the guy. You're the real estate guy, right? I'm like, yeah, that's, that's me. And it's, it's funny because I had one client who said, they've seen all my videos. When I show up to the listing presentation, I didn't have to really do much. Just explain the contract, make sure they knew they were paying me 6% commission on the listing. They signed away, and I was done with it. Video is a great way to keep yourself top of mind and make you the subject matter expert in real estate. I hope that you take all of these different ideas and implement them into your marketing plan on a weekly and monthly basis. Hopefully it helps you grow your business. Thanks for watching.